Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm Travis Apple, and he's Brian Vale, and welcome to Game Time Situation. That's right, folks. Now, we are glad you could take a time out from your lovely date and join us because we have a lot to cover. Now, Valentine's Day is usually known for candy and flowers, but Game Time Situation is here with you for the next half hour. Indeed we are. Now, I know most of you guys out there have already taken your sweetie pie, your honey, your love muffin out to dinner. Well, if you're a little cheap and couldn't afford dessert, that's exactly where we come in. Now, Trav, what, what type of dessert would we be exactly? It doesn't matter. Let's just tell our fans what we're going to cover. Well, that's easy enough. We're going to go through all of the winter sports with highlights and in-depth coverage. And don't forget, Stud Muffin Chip Whipple will once again take another AU athlete under the Game Time Spotlight. And last year I got in a little bit of trouble. Folks, Chip is not single. And don't forget the AU football team and Coach Lee Owens had National Signing Day a week ago, so we have footage and interviews from that big day. So basically you're telling me that once again we have a lot of Ashton sports to cover in a short amount of time, so we better get going. It's, it's game, game time. time. Woo! Now the Ashton University women's basketball team had just finished off a tough road trip on our last show as they were defeated at Fair State and at Grand Valley State. Well this time the Eagles had two more road games and one home game in the past several weeks. Two Thursdays ago the Eagles traveled to Hillsdale in hopes of shooting as well as Cupid usually does. However the Chargers charged right through the Eagles hearts and Ashton was handed their third consecutive loss 77-66. Ashland never led in the contest as Hillsdale led at halftime 40-28. The Eagles could then never cut the lead below 11 points in the second half. AU was led by senior guard Amber Rawl who scored 27 of her 29 points in the second half. Rawl averaging 23.4 points per game which ties her for second in the country. That's pretty impressive. She was 9 of 19 from the floor and 3 of 3 from 3 point arc. She was joined in double figures by senior Catherine Porterado who tallied 16 points, and freshman guard Lindsey Gott, who finished with 10 markers. As Elizabeth O'Brien was AU's leading rebounder with 8 crumbs, and Jessica Mench and Porterada had 7 apiece. Ashton was averaging 73 points per game, but failed to reach the 70-point plateau in its last two games. Now, Val, I know the Eagles stayed on the road trip to play again. Were they able to find their true love, a win at Wayne State? After the loss at Hillsdale, the Lady Eagles got off to another slow start against the Warriors. They got down 20-8 to in the first 10 minutes of the game, seeing the deficit expand to 14 later in the half. A late run in the final four minutes put the Eagles down 36-27 to at the half, but the second half saw the Warriors regain control, going up 50-37 to with 16 minutes to play. Then seniors Amber Raw and Catherine Porterata took over. They combined for a 12-0 run between the two of them to make it a one-point game. AU kept the game within reach until the final two minutes when they made their move. Two, two layups by Porterata tied the game with under 20 seconds to go, and after a big defensive stop, Rawl hit a three-pointer with .9 seconds to go, giving Ashland the 70-67 win. AU shot 65.2% from the field in the second half, converting 10 of 11 free throws as well. Rawl scored 22 points, including making 13 of 15 free throws, as Porterata added 20 points and 10 rebounds. The Lady Eagles held Wayne State to 29% shooting in the final 20 minutes, and the win gave AU momentum heading into their final home stand after breaking the Warriors' hearts. Now, Trav, how did the Eagles do against Pitt Johnstown? Well, after the win, the Eagles looked to get their second straight as they returned home to play at Cage Gymnasium. That was a huge day for all as she scored 23 points and in the process became the first woman in AU history to reach the 2,000-point mark. With Rawl and company, the Lady Eagles were able to down pit Johnstown 79-73. Rawl reached the plateau with 9.38 left in the first half. At the ensuing timeout, an announcement was made and the crowd of 616 gave her a 30-second standing ovation. Rawl took the game ball into the stands and gave it to her parents also during the ovation. Rawl said afterwards, quote, The record doesn't really mean that much to me because it's not really about me. If it wasn't for my teammates, I wouldn't have been able to get to 2,000 points. It's a great accomplishment. But I'm more happy that we won, end quote. Well, from game time situation, congratulations, Amber, on a job well done. 
Now, back to live action. AU added a late bucket in that game to take a 38-35 halftime lead, and they would never look back. Porterata had a great game as well. She finished with 26 points and 10 rebounds for her eighth double-double of the season. She was 13-19 from the field. Raw went 11 for 22 for 23 points. Also, on an assist from Raw to Porterata in the second half, Raw moved into second place in the all-time career assist category with 323. Sophomore guard Alethea Lamberson filled the stat sheet with 7 points, 8 assists, and 6 rebounds. O'Brien came off the bench to contribute 8 points and 3 rebounds, and Betsy Morrison tallied 6 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 assists. Now a big factor in the win was Ashland passed for 21 assists, giving it close to a 2-1 to one assist to turnover ratio, which is pretty good. Very good. Well, with the Eagles' win, the Eagles improved to 12-12 and 12 overall and 5-9 and nine in GLIAC play. They will return home tomorrow as they host first place Gannon. Live play-by-play -play action can be seen right here on TV2. The men's basketball team has been looking all season for that perfect gift, a road win. They had yet to find it when they tried to win at Hillsdale last weekend. The first half was back and forth with the Chargers in the lead most of the way, but AU came back to tie it at 33 at the break. Ashland hit five threes in the half. The second half was more of the same as the two teams traded blows with neither team able to get more than five points separation. The game was tied at 69 with under two minutes to go when senior Greg Emmons hit a three-pointer. Hillsdale countered with a jumper of their own to make it 72-71, to and then an eagle turnover gave the Chargers a chance to take the lead, but they missed two free throws. Senior Vaughn, knight in shining armor, made two free throws, and the defense held, giving AU a 75-71 road win, their first such victory of the season. The Eagles converted 21 of 23 free throws on the day, also hitting eight threes. Emmons had 26 points and 13 rebounds, while Knight, Rob McRae, and Brett Bartlett had 13 points each. Could the Eagles pick up a second road win in two tries, Trav? Well, like I said, after the big W over the Chargers, the Eagles were looking to get that second win against Wayne State. After a close first half, the Warriors led 38-34. However, Wayne State came out firing on all cylinders in the second half as they used a 15-2 run early to jump out in front and go on to win 84-65. The Warriors out-rebounded AU 39-19, shot 61% from the floor and 66.7% from three-point range, and also connected on eight of nine free throw attempts. Very good shooting there for the Wayne State Warriors. AU was led by Emmons, who scored a team-high 16 points, 12 of them coming in the first half. Emmons ended the game with five rebounds. Brett Bartlett dished out four assists and three steals to go with his seven points. With the loss, AU fell to 15-9 and 7-7 and in the GLIAC. They will also next host Gannon tomorrow evening. Now, we just went through basketball coverage of both the men and the women, and both teams are right there, and with a few wins and a couple other teams lost, can make the GLIAC tournament. In order to help them, fans, you should try and go out and support them either tomorrow, Saturday, or next Thursday. Anyway, I actually forgot it was Valentine's Day that until was, I got here this evening. That was a little foolish of you, Trav. So I'm going to have to take a quick time out and try to get the old lady something nice. I'll be careful out there, but fans, don't go too far. Chip Whipple is up next with the Game Time Spotlight. Ashland Theological Seminary, transforming the world. One pastor. One counselor. One city. One campus. One village. One family. One teacher. One crisis. One missionary. One shelter. One church. Transforming the world, one student at a time. Hi, Mr. President. My parents believe that eating meals together will make our country strong. Is this something that you did when you were a kid? I, I, I did eat with my family so long as my mother wasn't cooking. It's not good making fun of your mother, even if you are president, but it is good to have dinner with your kids. We know the more often children have dinner with their families, the less likely they are to smoke, drink, and use drugs. So simply having dinner together can help your children forever, even if you're not a great cook. Every trip, every time. California, here I come! Buckle up so you and your friends get home safely. Yeah! I'm a 
just scream into the world from the top of some place very high. Seatbelts save lives. Okay. Visit NHTSA.gov. Low and slow. <laughs> Best friend, what are you going to do? Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. That is spectacular advice. For the people in our armed forces, it's a time of sacrifice, a time of duty. That's why we've joined together to form the Armed Forces Relief Trust to help military families cope with financial and medical emergencies at home. The four military aid societies gave millions last year to cover unexpected medical expenses, child care, and more. But with so many overseas, the need is greater than ever. They're serving us. Let's serve them in return. Welcome back, Cupids. Now, thanks for allowing me to have that commercial break. I was able to get some roses. Obviously fake, so they will never die. Anyways, now several weeks ago, the AU track teams competed at Finley in the Fazoli's Open, which sounds very good right now. Anyways, both teams were able to perform very well as the women finished in second place out of 10 teams with 108.5 points, while the men's held their own and finished in third place out of 12 teams with 78.5 points. On the women's side, three competitors took first place as junior Alyssa Klein hurdled her way to victory in the 60-meter hurdles at a lightning-fast rate of 8.70 seconds. Senior Jen Picucci took the victory in the long jump with a jump of 17 feet, 11.5 inches. Also claiming a victory was junior Jen Tinney in the shot put with a throw of 14.64. Wow, that's, that's impressive. 14.64, I got that enough. I got that yeah, easy. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I might be able to pick it up. They might be able to throw you that far. Yeah, I might be able to pick the shot put up. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. The men also had three winners of their own as senior Kibway Johnson threw the weight throw 22.47 meters. Junior Brian Ryman sprinted his way to victory in the 200 meter dash with a time of 22.16 seconds. And rounding out the winners on the men's side was junior Brian Vickers with a shot put throw of 18.10 meters. The women also had various other competitors finish pretty well. Taking second place was freshman Steph Abbott in the long jump. Clayne in the 400 meter dash, senior Amber Miller in the 60 meter hurdles, Tinney in the weight throw, and the 4x400 relay team that consists of senior Joanne Douglas Miller, senior Kylie Sekluich, and freshman Lisa Roth. The third place finishers for the women were senior Mara Lee Albright in the 5,000 meter run, junior Shallon Boyer in the triple jump, and Douglas in the long jump. And the men's team also had their fair share of competitors as well. Finishing second for them was junior Rob Clank in the weight throw and Ryman in the 400-meter dash. Securing individual third-place finishes for the Eagles were freshman Joe Horn in the 200-meter dash, which also set a new school freshman record with a time of 22.47, and freshman Nick Glavak in the 3,000-meter run. Wow, that's a lot of top finishers for the AU track and field, and it feels very good to be able to talk that long about them. But now that I'm out of breath, well, why don't you tell us how last week's meets went? Well, Trevor, you might want to get into some shape, but the men's track team, along with the women, headed to Finley for the Finley Open, having success in several events. Now, you know, Trav, this weekend we found out a few things, you know. Um, you just don't beat the Dixie Chicks in a Grammy-winning contest. Goodbye, and, Earl. And you do not beat Ryan Ryman in the 200-meter dash. That's he won that event for the second time last week as Joe Horn won the triple jump and took third in the 400 meters, and Kibway Johnson won the weight throw, setting a national collegiate record. Some other members of the team went to Bowling Green for the All-Ohio meet as the 4x4 men's relay team won and Brian Vickers won the shot put. Vickers took second in the weight throw as well. Now on the women's side, Jen Tinney finished third in the weight throw while Michelle Stark took fourth. Tinney took second in the shot put and Alyssa Klain finished second in the 60 meter dash. The women finished fifth as a team in the event. I can't imagine throwing like the weight throw, the shot put. I, I, mean, I can barely pick those things those up, are much not less light, throw them. You know, and then throw them to, you know, 18. Yeah, and, right. That's yes. crazy. Yeah. yeah, it is. Anyways, the Eagles will compete again this weekend at several different meets. On Friday, there is the Indiana Open, the Kent State Tune Up, and the Akron Open. On Saturday, there's the Kent State Tune Up once again and a meet at Ohio State. Good luck to all the track athletes this weekend. Now, we would also like to congratulate Jason Oswald and Becky Yoder for earning all academic awards. To be named to this, a student athlete must have a minimum GPA of 3.25, something that we know little about, and finish in the top 30 at the regional cross country championship, something we know less about. That's right. Oswald, a senior, is I a can't business even talk, major. talk, let alone run. Oswald is a senior business major, and Yoder is a sophomore exercise science major. At the regional meet, Oswald was 23rd, and Yoder took 20th. 
Well, congratulations to them. We're giving a round of applause all the way around. Now, we just went through several track meets, and several names kept appearing quite a bit. One of those names is Brian Ryman, a sprinter on the men's indoor and outdoor track teams. Well, somehow, in some way, we were able to catch Ryman, and we have him locked in the chair, so he can't run away from us. That's right, folks. Chip Whipple has Ryman under the game time spotlight. Take it away, Chip. Thanks, guys. I'm here with AU Track member Brian Ryman. How you doing, Brian? Good. Are you ready to be on the Game Time Spotlight? I'm ready. Okay. First off, you're a track athlete. You're senior indoor. You'll be a junior for your outdoor season. You only have one year of eligibility left. Can you talk a little bit about the events that you participate in? Okay. The events that I participate in here at Ashland are uh, the 200, the 400, uh, the 4x1 relay, and the 4x4 relay. And all those are short sprint events. Uh, I don't run the 100 meter dash, but I, I jump up a little higher than that. So. Now, not a lot of people follow track because it's not a mainstream sport or anything like that, but can you tell us a little bit what it takes every day to be prepared to run every Saturday? Yeah, the big thing about track is that, you know, we're not a team event or anything like that, so a lot of it is individual. And uh, to run every weekend, I mean, we have to go out there, especially as a sprinter or any athlete, you get it's 100%, and you can't. You can't go not 100% mm -hmm. uh, in, in order to want to win a race, so it, it takes that level of uh, commitment. Now, you are part of a relay team, so it's not completely individual. How do you work with your other teammates to make sure that transitions between when you're handing the baton off go smoothly and you're not dropping the baton or going outside of the zone that you're allowed to pass okay. off to? Well, we do a lot of practice with that on our track. Um, we don't have a track here on campus, but we share mm -hmm. with the high school. And so we have exchange zones, and uh, usually if we're running a race on Friday or Saturday, mm -hmm. you know, we'll go out Friday, and uh, pretty much most of the practice we'll just work on exchanges. And mm -hmm. uh, because if you know if you mess up an exchange, then the whole race is over, so it's kind of pointless. Mm -hmm. but. Now you do run indoor track during the winter and outdoor track during the spring. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the difference it is between training for both? How is it different running the events, like things like that? What's the difference between the two? Uh, the difference between indoor track and outdoor track is that the track is basically is cut in half. Uh, so you'll see that like a taller athlete where he'll be better outdoor, uh, if he comes to indoor track, uh, he won't run as good at times because the curves are so much tighter and uh, he'll have a harder time running the curves. Uh, me, I'm about 5'10 and a half, so I kind of work both ways. I can run indoor, outdoor, and my times, they get better outdoor, but you know, indoor is not so hard for me. Now you've been very successful over the course of your Ashland career. Mm -hmm. Now, with that success, does it come like you're a leader to some of the younger runners, like freshmen and sophomore coming in? Do you see yourself as having that leadership role where you have to take? Uh, definitely, there's there's a leadership role. I've I've always been a modest guy. You know, mm -hmm. I don't. You know, I've I've done good things, but I don't. You know, get a big head or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but I understand as coming in, I always looked up to the older guys, and so as being a role model at practice, I try to step up, lead the workouts, uh, stuff like that. So. Can you talk a little bit about your personal goals for indoor track season this year and then also for the outdoor session? Definitely indoor track season. Uh, we, we're, you know, right now we're number one in the power rankings as mm -hmm. a team. Uh, at, at Nationals in Boston as a team, I think we can place very high. Uh, top three maybe, mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely an option. Uh, for me individually, uh, All-American and the 200 and 400 would be a great accomplishment. Now you mentioned the team part of track, which as you mentioned earlier, that it's not always a team sport. How do you keep in mind that team aspect when you're out there just running your own individual event, but you also want to be there supporting mm -hmm. your other teammates who are also doing individual mm -hmm. events? Well, track's great because, you know, you know, in my races, I'm a sprinter, so in a whole day, I'll be at a track meet for like eight hours. Mm -hmm. I might run a total of a minute and 20 seconds the whole day. So in that time, you know, there's a lot of downtime where I can run around to different events, you know, cheer on my teammates. Uh, get them pumped up so that they can do their best and uh, we always try to fluctuate and run around and cheer people on so in that there's a team <clears throat> one last question you got your outdoor season this year for your junior year and then you have one more year for outdoor what's your main accomplishment you're looking to get f by the time you graduate uh, for me uh, the ultimate accomplishment for me would be to hit the uh, b standard olympic b standard uh, in the 400 or 200 meter dash and uh, go to the olympic trials well, thanks, Brian. Thank you. You are now officially off the Game Time Spotlight. <laughs> we'll be back with more Game Time Situation right after this. Every trip. Every time. California, here I go! Buckle up. 
so you and your friends get home safely. I must scream into the world from the top of some place very high. Seatbelts save lives. Okay. Visit NHTSA.gov. Low and slow. <laughs> My best friend, what are you going to do? Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. That is spectacular advice. You're a good driver, a careful driver, and you don't stand a chance. Not at a railroad crossing with bad sight lines and no lights or gates, where vegetation, buildings, or hills block your view, where you can't see the train and you only have seconds before it hits your safe, careful self and you die. Go to angelsontrack.org to report dangerous crossings because careful is just no match for a 200-ton locomotive. Look, my first tooth! Dudley, spit out the toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time you brushed your teeth. And I brush twice a day, every day. Oh, here's that nice dentist, Dr. Benchley. Yep, he showed me how to floss. Why are your teeth blue? I use my mouth guard whenever I play sports to protect my smile. And visit the dentist regularly. Remember, brush twice a day and floss once a day. Kids, how do we take care of our teeth? Brush your teeth. Twice a day. Floss your teeth. Once a day. If you want healthy teeth, do this every day. Brush your teeth. Fight tooth decay. Floss your teeth. Don't forget regular dental checkups, okay? Brush your teeth. Twice. I love those dinosaur commercials. Now we have a prequel. That's great. Anyway, roses are red, violets are blue. I'm so happy you came back so I can see you. Now, sorry, Brian. The AU wrestling team has also been a force to be reckoned with on AU's campus. And no, Brian, that does not mean they're just fighting everyone around campus. They're fighting when it counts, and that is on the mat. Several weeks ago, AU went up to face some good competition as at first they grappled to get against Pitt Johnstown. They're Johnstown was ranked 5th in the country at the time, and they defeated AU 26-13. The Eagles received wins from Marcus Gordon at 149 pounds, Tony Bradbury at 157, Justin Ferguson at 174, and Josh Ole at 285. Ole won a 14-8 decision over Chris Dempsey to bring his record to 17-0 on the season. The Eagles then traveled to OU for a meet against Ohio University and Virginia. Did the meet end up pretty rosy for AU? The wrestling team faced some tough competition last weekend, Travis. There it is. They'd like to have you on the camera for just a little too much for That's my nice. liking. That's nice. I like that. Last Enjoy weekend, that. the Bobcats and Cavaliers matched up with the Eagles. Against OU, Tony Iveen won at 141 pounds. Marcus Gordon won at 149 pounds. Justin Ferguson won at 174. Matt Allen won at 184. And heavyweight Josh Ole lost for the first time this season, falling to 17-1. It all added up to a 24-14 win for the Bobcats. And now, Trav, how did the Eagles fare against the Cavaliers? Well, they obviously weren't playing the Cleveland Cavaliers because in that case they could have probably gotten a victory. Well, on that same day, the Eagles suffered a tough loss to Virginia as the Cavs stung Ashley with a 38-3 win. I don't they think the Cavs are stinging anybody. Yeah, well, they might be. They have swords. <laughs> They're poking them. Yeah, but they could still sting them. They're not bees. They pinch them. Pinch them like on Valentine's Day. AU's lone win came at 157, where Tony Bradbury claimed a 6-5 decision. While the wrestlers kept a grappling, how did the meet against West Liberty go, Brian? The team made the trip to West Liberty last Wednesday, coming off those two losses. And the Hilltoppers were not any nicer, defeating the Eagles 20-16. Tony Iveen once again won at 141. Marcus Gordon once again won at 149. Tony Bradbury won at 157. Once again. Eric Lakeo won at 165. And David Crowley won at 285. But it was enough. Now, how did AU perform at Finley this past weekend? Well, finally, to round out Ashland's meets in the past two weekends, they traveled to that in-state rival Finley for a dual meet. Well, the Eagles were able to put another notch in the win column as they defeated the Oilers 23-14. AU got off to a strong start as they won three of their first four matches. Ryan Belcher got the evening started with an 8-3 triumph at 125. Tony Iovine was an 8-1 victor at 141, and Marcus Gordon followed that up with an 18-6 win at 149 pounds. The wins didn't stop there for the Eagles as 
Ashland won four other decisions. The list of winners include Eric Lakey at 165, Justin Ferguson at 174, Matt Allen at 184, and David Crowley at 197. Ashland's next home match is actually right now as they are hosting Gannon for their final regular season home duel of the season. Tonight, five seniors will be honored. Those seniors are Matt Allen, Tony Ivine, Eric Lakia, Tim Schantz, and Matt Snyder. Currently, the Eagles are ranked 11th in the country. The women's swimming team has had a successful season, but last weekend they faced a tough Wayne State team. Megan Dort won the 200 breaststroke, Jenny Johnson won the 200 backstroke, and the 200 free relay team won as well. The 200 medley relay team also won, and in the end, it wasn't enough as the Lady Warriors won the match 140 to 91. Well, much like the women, the men also dropped a tough one in the pool at Wayne State. The AU men fell 127 to 95 in their final meet before the GLIAC Championships hosted at Ashland. The Ashland men got a win from Jesper Madsen in the 200 breaststroke. Todd Pollock won the gold medal in the 500 freestyle. The men's 200 free relay won as the quartet of Omar Fatala, Ben Monti, Sean McGraw, and Arthur Gaveau. Both swimming teams will compete in the GLIAC Championships on February 21st to the 24th, right here at AU. Well, once again, fans, there are a ton of Ashland University athletics going on, and by the looks of things outside, it's not going to be easy to drive anywhere. So why not stay right here on campus and watch some of the great right Division II athletics here at Ashland? That's right, you know, especially with that snow. Now, last Wednesday, the Ashland University football team and head coach Lee Owens held the National Letter of Intent Day at the new education building. The Eagles were very fortunate as they ended up signing 24 new recruits. That's right, Trav, and that's pretty good as they had 30 players on campus and they ended up signing 24 of them, so it looks like Ashland is a very good fit for many football players. Along with the 24 recruits, the Eagles also got five transfers that came in, including three from the D1 programs. Those transfers include Aaron Brown from Central State University, Brandon Butler from Akron U, Dre Ratliff from Marshall, Jason Searley from Chippewa, and Chance Smith from Southern Illinois. The Eagle freshman recruits coming in next year will be kicker slash punter Michael Belsito, defensive lineman Joey DeAndrea, running back Bryson Fags, linebacker Julian Goodwine, linebacker Tyler Griffin, defensive lineman James Hodge, running back Jamon Javy, and tight end Mike Canuvan. Defensive back Tyler Crummel, offensive lineman Matthew Lisco, linebacker Jim McDonald, defensive back Evan Marks, DB running back Devin Ohl, Travis Owens, and BJ Reed. Round our offensive lineman Eric Sibley, DB Corey Skozen, linebacker James Strawler. Uh, guys that are tough, guys that are team players, some really good leaders, and it's, it's, been, it's getting harder and harder for us to find that when we go out to the schools to recruit. Well, we, we, we needed to sign a couple good corners, and we needed to sign a good defensive lineman, and we lost a bunch of linebackers, so you can see we brought in a bunch of linebackers. We, we're pretty deep at wide receivers, so we didn't sign many wide receivers. Um, we signed a couple good offensive linemen, a couple really good tight ends. When you think about it, we had 300 players on the campus, and we ended up signing uh, 25 of them. So you really have it, it, it's finding the right fit, it, it, the right fit academically, the right fit for geography, distance from home, uh, the right kind of football player. Uh, and so it's there's so many things that go into it. But when you can find, you know, you want the player, and the player wants you, then you have the right fit. I think there's a chance that a couple of these players can help us right away. You know, we uh, we think Casey Wendell is such a talented athlete. There's some we need to find a place to get him on the field and get him on the field early. Uh, we feel the same way about uh, DeAndre, uh, Joey DeAndre, because I mean he's he's a talented defensive lineman, and we need some guys up front that can make plays. Well, we. We think every year the recruiting class has been a little better, and, and, and we've had some pretty good classes in the past, but I think this has been our best class. And if you can just keep recruiting better players each year, you're going to get better as a football team. Last year we, we were talking about championships before we won our first game. This year we're not talking about anything but St. Joseph, and you know we're going to play a game at a time, and you know, it's, and I know it's an old coach's saying, but we really believe it. Um, we're going to be talented again this year. Maybe not as talented on defense, but I know we're going to have better senior leadership. We have more seniors, and, and I really think the chemistry, the team chemistry, will be much better. Well, it looks like it be, could, could be another exciting year for Ashton football. At the press conference, Owens also talked about new athletic facilities in the future, and on top of the list was a new football stadium, which he said an announcement would be coming soon. He also mentioned a new weight room, locker rooms, coach's office, equipment room, meeting rooms, recruiting lounge, training room, and video technology rooms. 
Owen said that those facilities would go along great with the great academic facilities and the new rec center as well as the location of Ashton University. The Eagles will hold their purple versus gold game on Friday, April 26th at Community Stadium. Now, you know who's going to be coaching the purple team in that game is President, President Fred Fink. Fink. So yes. that should be interesting. Definitely a reason to go out there and see. And yes. Also, you know, see how the AU football team is going to turn their season around after last year. It'll be April 26th. Well, Trav, it's getting to be about that time that everyone needs to go take their sweethearts to a movie. Oh, why would you take those good little candy sweethearts to a movie? You wouldn't even be able to read what they have on them. Oh, right, right. But it's because I said so, Trav. That's why. But it would probably go pretty good with popcorn, the little, little hearts mm -hmm. with the writing on them. Big. Popcorn, candy. Anyways. And then your girl's there, too. Well, uh, yeah. She's just, you she can be. Your sweetheart. You, you're not going to go and just well, have popcorn I guess and the candy hearts? Here you go. No, you're going to get them. And then they get one for every five I eat. Oh, okay. You know, I got gotcha. That's the way it works. I got gotcha. you. Anyways. Well, anyway, we'd like to thank you for joining us us on this lovely day and we'd like to thank our whole crew for helping us put together the show. Fans don't worry we won't be gone for too long as we will return in two weeks on February 28th at the same time same channel. That's right and once again on that day we have a lot of highlights in-depth coverage statistics and once again Chip Whipple will bring another AU athlete under the game time spotlight. Also be sure to check out the live coverage of AU basketball tomorrow against Gannon and Saturday against Mercyhurst and from all of us here happy Valentine's Day. Yes, happy V-Day to all, and everyone, please be careful on those slippery roads. We will see you in two weeks. Have a good night. See ya.